What's going on everyone? This is David from Pier with a Zeitgeist Game Review. Today we're going to be talking about Rise of the Ronin from Team Ninja. Let's get into it. Rise of the Ronin is an action RPG set in Japan in the late 1800s. The game is one big what-if scenario. Like what if there is a rogue samurai searching for their twin with a cyborg arm while Japan is falling apart around them? It sounds pretty cool, I guess. I'm not gonna lie, this game starts out pretty rough. After a little intro boss, you wake up to find your house on fire and a bunch of assassins everywhere. You gotta find your master and get out. Wait, did I just die? The game just started. Is this Dark Souls? I'm not exaggerating when I say that this tutorial section took me almost an hour to finish. This is still the very beginning of the game. The title hasn't even shown up on screen yet, but the difficulty's like way up there. I'll admit I'm not the best at video games, but I've been playing for a pretty long time and I've never had an experience where I died so many times in the tutorial that I had to lower the difficulty setting just to continue. But you know, feel free to leave a comment telling me how bad I am anyways. The problem starts with what I call input overload. Right off the bat, you're forced to learn an overwhelming amount of gameplay mechanics that all seem vital. Choose a combat style for both your main and secondary weapon, pick your stance for each weapon that you're going to have to change on the fly depending on who you're fighting, and there's going to be more weapons and stances for weapons as you go on so don't get too attached. Choose the special attack for each weapon, and don't forget the consumables, throwables, and ranged weapons. The idea is to give the player a bunch of options so that everyone can have a unique, customized experience, but it's really just too much. I mean, just look at all these tutorial pop-ups. Okay, it's finally over. I can play the game. You know, I don't think I want to play anymore. Honestly, there's no problem with having a wide variety of options suited to different builds and play styles. People really like that. The issue is when the game is front-loaded with all that information, forcing players to make decisions and skim through tutorials that they don't understand while they're still figuring out how to jump and attack. That stuff needs to be spread out throughout the game. For example, Baldur's Gate 3, which has so many different ways to play that I don't think any one person will ever really discover everything the game has to offer. But the player is trusted to figure it out as they go and play in a way that makes sense to them. That's not the case with Rise of the Ronin. The result in this case is a messy experience. Most of my deaths were because of the inscrutable parry mechanic, which I never completely figured out, and which the game also force-fed me right at the start. Now I could rant about that for a while, so let's move on to the game's biggest weak point, the story. Japanese history is really cool, and this is a very interesting era to explore, but the narrative always felt completely disconnected from the player character's journey to find their blade twin. So much so that I almost forgot the twin was in the game until the few moments that they did pop up. And because the story doesn't have a neat place for the player to fit in, you always feel like a passive observer to the history taking place around you, which, consequently, means that decisions that really should be important actually do not matter at all. They make a big fuss about which faction you'll choose to support, but in the end, the game decides for you. Even after literally choosing one side, you still end up supporting the opposite side when the story decides that that's what you need to do. Outside of the main character just not fitting in this world, for a majority of my time with this game, the story just wasn't working for me, and I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. Something just felt off, like you keep switching between tones in what should be a pretty serious narrative. Finally, I figured it out. Rise of the Ronin is heavily inspired by anime. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy anime, and the medium definitely has its place in video games. But when you're telling me a serious story about the Meiji Restoration, which really happened, I shouldn't see main characters acting like complete goofballs after serious battles, or larger characters whose proportions are completely outside of reality. My character's a full-grown man, so this dude's gotta be like 8 feet tall minimum. If they'd gone all in on an anime-style game with the same story, it could have been something cool. But it just doesn't work here. Not to mention the heavy turns into science fiction, with tools and devices that have no place in 1850s Japan. I mean, seriously, a grappling hook cyborg arm. W what are we doing here? I'm a sucker for sci-fi and cool gameplay, but those elements have to fit naturally within the world. I bet you're wondering right now if there's anything about this game that I actually enjoyed, and the answer is yes. The missions and gameplay loop were decently fun, I always love sneaking around a map to quietly take out some enemies before fighting the tougher guys one-on-one. -on -one. That's always pretty satisfying, and that's what most of the missions are. The problem is that I'm forced to play this way because the parry mechanic is so inconsistent that I can't take on 15 enemies at once. This only went wrong for me a couple times, 
like when I had to fight bosses, each of which has a different parry timing, meaning that I really never could get a handle on the parry. Or this time, when I discovered that the game's draw distance is actually terrible, and it has trouble loading in even one NPC on its own. Ready and willing. I was only sneaking this way because I thought it was clear, so this kinda sucks. I do have to admit, it's also a pretty well-crafted world. Now, it's nowhere near as beautiful as Ghost of Tsushima, which is impossible to not bring up when talking about this game, but it's a faithful recreation of Japan. One of the coolest moments for me was when I realized I was in the Asakusa district of Tokyo, which I got to visit last year. It was really cool to see how similar it was 200 years ago, and then sneak around the area at night to fight a bunch of bad guys. Other things I enjoyed were simple features like auto-riding on your horse to a chosen point and the ability to customize your outfit no matter what gear you're wearing. But I'm not going to give the game credit for quality of life features that should be in every game. Unfortunately, I got my hopes up for Rise of the Ronin. With no sequel to Ghost of Tsushima in sight, this game was supposed to fill the samurai-shaped hole in my heart, but it fell short. It was too complex and undercooked at the same time. Well-intentioned, but uninspired and uneven. The best thing I can say for it is that there's a lot to do, and that's why I can only give Rise of the Ronin a 2 out of 5. If you played Rise of the Ronin, what did you think? What game should I play next? Let me know at the comment down below. If you like this video, subscribe for a new review every month.